Hello, welcome to the Pain Points of Interest podcast. We want to tell the stories of people, their businesses, and the journey that they are on. Our purpose is to gather a new perspective on starting, growing, maturing, and maintaining businesses of all sizes. So grab that cup of coffee, sit back, and join us as we start the conversation. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, Sarah Harbuck, and today in the studio, we have the lovely Stacy Brown. Hello, Stacy. Hello. And she is with Junkin' Treasures and Abrams Event Venue. So why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get started talking about your business. Well, like you mentioned, I'm Stacy. I have uh, Junkin' Treasures Event Decor Rentals, and we just happen to be located in the Abrams Venue building. Gotcha. So, and you kind of help organize who gets to rent it. Absolutely. And in addition yes. to renting the decor to go with absolutely. it. Absolutely. Now, how how long have you guys been in business? We are going on eight years. Eight years. We're into our eighth year. Oh my goodness! See, yes. I didn't know that. Yes. Okay. So, have you always operated in the downtown area, or did you? No, okay. no, no. Um, I started my business at home, actually. Okay. Um, actually started it in antique booths and people found out about me huh. and wanted to borrow my stuff for events okay. so yeah so that like sparked this idea that oh I could I could rent this stuff out it didn't spark an idea in me <laughs> literally it was purely by accident it sparked an interest in my husband really? I guess to put me to work well you know yeah. because I was about to retire <laughs> and um yeah so long story short a friend calls can I borrow some things for my daughter's wedding she had seen some things at the antique market okay I'm like sure so worked it all out hung up the phone my husband says why don't you think about renting all this stuff instead of just loaning it out? All right, you make money off of it over and over and over again. I'm like, you're pretty smart. I never <laughs> even thought about that. <laughs> never, Sometimes our husbands can have good ideas, right? Never dreamed it. Never. <laughs> That's crazy. So, so yeah. eight years out of your house originally, and now yeah. now you're in downtown mm-hmm. Lufkin mm-hmm. at the Abrams event venue. Yes. Um, so when you decided you know this, this sort of fell into your lap because someone asked hey can i rent this or mm-hmm. borrow this stuff for a, an event um what steps did you go about in you know actually putting together a business did it just sort of grow slowly over time or did you go okay we're going to do this for real and then i started out pretty small um, i was still working for the school system okay so it basically was a you know a part-time thing um so when i really got my my brain to turning I'm like I need to investigate this further what are the implications what am I going to have to do business wise you know all the questions so I just called up the SBA Mm -hmm. at the college yeah (laughs) and I just went and talked to them I'm like am I crazy you know what do you think give me some feedback they're really an untapped resource that most people don't really utilize in the area it's really they really can help you. My husband, when he was um, starting this business, uh, the tattoo shop, he, you know, I think he went and asked, you know, some questions. And, and when he was doing, you know, standpipe, it was like, hey, help me out here. What am I doing wrong? What should I do differently? Right, you know, right. and they really are there for that. They very really purpose. are. And to this day, uh, Diane and I are friends. That's and great. She gives me feedback when I went into my panic mode <laughs> at, you know, during when COVID set in. Yep, you know, yep. it was just, it's, it is really a good resource. So you went there and got some advice. To begin and, with. Mm-hmm. And that's probably something a lot of people should look into. I don't even know where that came from. Did somebody just, tell you, hey, go to the SBA? I, well, no, I don't recall that. I think I just got online at the college. I'm like, okay, let me see if there are maybe some resources, business courses, res- you know, resources, you know, some of those night classes, those kind of, you know, community yeah, yeah. service mm-hmm. classes. And I just ended up with her. Yeah, yeah. I have too. 
I was like, hey, so, I want to learn about that. Um, okay, well, it's a right, six-week course. I'll sign up. Right, yeah, you know. <laughs> right, exactly. So, well, that's great. So, yeah, that's a had... really, that's unfortunately, and, but I think it's great that you bring that up because we, I don't think we've had anybody else mention that as a first step in getting their business started. And I have completely and utterly forgotten to go, hey, if you want to start a business, maybe that should be your yeah. first resource. I, well, I was clueless. Yeah. So I needed, You've never I run a needed business by some, your, feed, some for yourself. feedback. No, yeah, you've like always worked a, in the school system. A booth system. at an antique mall. <laughs> Right. No, no. But that's but that's a little different, I, I think, than than the actual day to day of running right. a business. You know, right? Yeah, that's great that you use that, and that we're able to yeah. help you and expand off right. of that idea. And did you run into any kind of obstacles or or things that you know kind of tripped you up my, at first? My brain really goes fast. So I was under the pretense that I was just going to be you know, wham, 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 busy, get it busy. going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, but the one thing I knew off the top of my head was that I didn't want any debt. I yes. did not want to go into debt doing or beginning the business. And to this day, we haven't. I guess that's why it's grown so slow. But yeah. Well, I mean, some people, some people, the 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 the, the risk factor is such an anxiety ridden mm-hmm. part of it that it they was. can't, you know, take out a bunch of money or I risk that. You know, mm-hmm. so yeah, you're going to grow a little slower when that's the case. However, you don't have any deficits exactly. that you have to worry about, exactly. especially when something like COVID happens. Absolutely, and you're shut down for a couple months. <laughs> I know. And when that happened, I was like thank goodness you know thank Jesus I did not I didn't because we were just adamant we've you know we we got out of debt you know I worked and retired and you know I just I didn't want any debt I mean, and that I'm puts you guys in a quit, really good position mm-hmm. then whenever something like that does come up right. that you don't have all this burden on your shoulders especially my, when you're older and you are in that retirement yes, bracket yeah and I'm retired now and my husband's retired but I'm not really retired so well, you know yeah. I feel like that keeps you sharp it does when you never really fully I'm retire. not it well come to find out I wasn't good I, I didn't I wasn't good at being retired mm-hmm. so I yeah. have to stay busy my father wasn't very good at being yeah. retired either. Yeah. <laughs> but I like what I'm doing I like being my own boss mm-hmm. which that's give or take well some days I am some, some days, days you I'm like not. yourself and some days not so exactly, much exactly <laughs> exactly so yeah it's it, it's all good and my my thought process was what you know down the road when I'm ready to walk away from it I can walk away. Right. I don't have a debt out there that yeah. I've got to succumb to for years. Right. Now, you had the benefit of having worked another job and, and did this kind of on the side at first. And so that's not having that debt load on you at first, can, you know, having used a little bit of savings or whatever mm-hmm. to fund your business mm-hmm. um, is not necessarily feasible for everyone. But when you can do that, we had, we've had a couple people on and their episodes aired last week uh, and then this week, you know, family members, you know, instead of going and getting a small business loan somewhere, family members um, uh, gave them money to get started and then they didn't charge interest and, and there was no time period in which it had to be paid back. So the burden of that wasn't as stressful on right. them and right. they were able to focus solely on running their business and not necessarily. So they basically <gasps> had partners. Yeah, they it, had silent yeah. partners and yeah. family members who said, here's the money. You don't have to, you know, pay it back super quickly or even in great amounts right away. Just whatever you can until that, you know, yeah. uh, until you can pay it back. And I think it's it afforded them some freedoms and less stress that would lessen the you know. stress so yes. I, I know that people who do take out loans to start businesses it is a tremendous amount of anxiety on your mind you know especially if you have employees which you know um that can that can add a whole other layer you know you're you're providing someone else's livelihood exactly so it's just you and your husband right now right yes. but he does expect a paycheck well <laughs> you know i mean i'm just saying he, yeah. it, yes he does i mean well too when you when you are getting paid it feels good, you know? Yes. When you don't take a paycheck and you have your own business, mm-hmm. you can really get depressed, maybe. I don't even know if that's the, the right Where word. Where are my rewards? It, yeah, like I've done all this work and I've got mm-hmm. nothing to show for mm-hmm. it kind of mentality. Yeah. So I do think it's it's good for business owners to pay themselves something. Yes, something. You know? they, yeah. they feel like yeah. this is working out right. well for them. Now, how did you come up with the Junk and Treasures name? Was that a name that you just pulled from the <laughs> antique store that you re- Literally, <laughs> because 
And my circle of friends and our antiquing ventures and trips, we go junkin'. Okay, that's what you call so, it. So, and I consider all of my stuff treasures. Yes. So, therefore, junkin' treasures is how it came about. Well, let's 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 kind of explain to everybody what exactly your business entails. So, you have furniture items mm-hmm. and decor yes. that you will rent out to parties or weddings or what have Corporate you. Corporate events, bridal showers, baby showers. So, it's yes. like a it's like a party rental in a way, but you're it's very specifically honed and picked out items that you've found yes. in these junkin yes. trips. It doesn't incorporate, I don't have um, like balloons and streamers and uh, water chairs. slides water and all that good stuff. Right, right. That's where I wanted to be unique in the aspect that you know, we've got the vintage furniture. Mm-hmm. We do have the smalls, you call it, as in multiple styles of vases, candlesticks. Bird cages. Yes. Mirrors. Yes. Rugs. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I can't even sit here and tell everything. When I first started, I had all of my inventory in Excel. Well, that that quickly went by the wayside. That was not going to work. <laughs> Did it get too overwhelming too yes, quick? Yes, <laughs> it got too overwhelming. I think about the first time or two I overbooked some items. Oh, so no. I knew then I had to have a more sophisticated a, a more sophisticated. What do you uh, use to keep track? I use a, a rental software system. Okay, so that, they actually make something specifically oh, yes, for that. Yes, yes. And I had a, lo- I had a mentor that was... Um, worked in this field so she gave me guidance you know on different ones to look at the one they use I started with that one and I moved to another one because it just didn't do everything I needed it to do so so keeping I would imagine keeping keeping track of who wants what items for what dates can can get a little hairy so having some kind of a software having that software does everything yeah that would I always wondered how that worked because I know I've worked with you for you know a party and different things and so I've always I was curious to like right how did she do how did she know which things we were taking and which things other people exactly exactly yeah that would be it didn't take long to figure that out that had to be one of the first investments yeah I would imagine for something any kind of business like that where you have to keep track of what's coming in and out and then when when it comes back into you taking that inventory making sure everything was picked Mm -hmm. up or that they dropped it all back off because when Sarah wants you know the pink settee or the green vintage sofa on October 10th which is the biggest date for this year yeah and I go to put that in it's gonna tell me you know, overbooked. Gotcha. Oops. So yeah. now, yeah, now you, you got to pick out a different it. sofa. Yeah, need this you time. to go back to the drawing board. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, that would uh, that would be that would be rough. Uh, double booking yourself on something like mm-hmm. that. Um, so, how did you do? You still like go to these? I guess antique. Um, flea market weekends and and pick up things, Absolutely. or have you kind of cultivated your collection and you like it where it is? I still go junking. I still go picking. <laughs> um, Every time we go on a trip, I'm looking for the nearest antique mall, flea market, because you just don't know what you're going to find that you need. Now, do you go to the big one out at Round Top every year? We have been there. Okay. Um, I've been to all the hidden, you know, places from here to Indiana, Pennsylvania, oh Ohio. So you didn't just stay in Texas. Oh, no. No, okay. no, we go, we go far and wide. And the reason for that is our kids work off in different states. Okay, so, so it's a nice excuse to go visit. Of course. So every yeah. time, you know, we go visit, I have ulterior <laughs> motives. You do you know? have to bring like besides a... Besides the grandbabies. Besides the grandbabies, do you have to bring a moving van with you so that you well, can bring it all home? I am limited <laughs> on what I can bring back, yes. Oh, that would be that would be the challenge, would it? It is, <laughs> it is. But it's, it's fun. I love that part. I still, I love that part. Yeah. So being a part of people's parties or weddings or receptions, I'm guessing, is... is is a rewarding part of the job like this where you get to be a part of a a moment in time that's a very joyous occasion for almost anybody Mm -hmm. um do you ever get to go to these events that that people have rented the furniture for i do um if we are there decorating you know a lot of times i will stay 
you know, for the first part of it or so, and then I leave. Not just actually going and showing up. We're invited sure. so many times, but by the time we're finished. If you're doing that every weekend, you're like, yes, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> yes, girl, yes. Like, yes. nope, I'm, I'm too tired. I've worked yeah, all week. I'm going to yeah. I'm gonna go home. But thanks. I'll take a piece of cake yeah, on the way out. Right, right. <laughs> um, so when you were, I mean, you've been in business for eight years. I, the most, you know, challenging thing that everyone has had to deal with this year has been the, you know, COVID-19 pandemic. And it has really, really hit the wedding industry really hard because Very hard. you can't really gather in big groups now and social distancing can be, you know, a problem, you know, in churches or venues because there may not be enough space. Um, what have you guys done to kind of overcome that? Or are you still kind of having, we are still, digging out of that hole? We, we will be digging out of that hole for a while. Yeah. It's, um, you know, 2020 is the year of the new word, pivot. Uh-huh. Lots of pivots. <laughs> yes. Lots of pivots. Um, when I, it first happened, right after, I think it was about March, you know, I was in denial. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is going to pass. This is no big deal. I think that was most of us, actually. Yeah. And then I think I was, you know, I was in a daze, you know, for a couple of weeks. And I'm like, okay. It was, and I got that uh, fight or flight thing going on, and I, I had to choose to fight. I yeah. mean, I wasn't ready, yeah. you know, to just let it sink. And it was very hard. Um, I, I reached out. I reached out to the chamber. Again, reached out to the SBA. I watched webinars. I did all kinds of things. Um, but yeah, we had to make a lot of pivots. One. Well, I think a lot of people are have been in those shoes, and it's like you know, yes, you're, you're we were alone, along, and yes. you, you know, you were gearing up for one of the busiest times of the Absolutely. year for you. So this kind of all happened right as that precipice of super busy. It was devastating, you know, and to say the least. You know, you lose all these you know contracts yes. or deposits because of you know right. nature. Uh, nobody really of anticipates, fault. right? You know, does, unreal. Did you guys have any sort of like insurance? policy? policy or I know some people do for things like this but we do um luckily and thank goodness we didn't have a lot of actual cancellations just reschedules we had a lot of reschedules which we were so thankful for now I did and just recently you know I have begun to refund some of the events two or three that um, there's just no way they're going to be able, you mm-hmm. know, to, to get back to their event. But for the most part, we delivered one this past weekend that was booked last um, last March, actually. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it, it, I, it's just been, there are hardly no words to describe it. It's been a it's been a roller coaster for a lot of small businesses, mm-hmm. and we've and pretty Stress. much everybody. Yes, yes. Everybody who sat in that chair has just been like, you know, you've had to figure out a new way to do things. Absolutely. You know, this was a wake up call for a lot of people. It I know was. for us specifically, um, you know, we, we we always thought, oh, you know, coffee, coffee will always be a thing, tattoos will always be a thing. But when your businesses are shut down, absolutely, and people can't come to them, mm-hmm. it was like, okay, now you got to switch to some kind some kind of. Blah, 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 I can't work. To, my words don't work today. Uh, you have to work. Switch to some sort of like online presence. Absolutely. And, and that's where I started going. I'm like, what am I going to do? Yeah. What can I do right now, you know, to to offer tours or to keep people hopefully interested in the future? And I opted for a virtual tour mm-hmm. of the venue. I saw that video. And I had up. that shot. I invested that money. Mm-hmm. And that is something that will stay Yes. You know, constant. Um, even there are lots of people who don't want to get out, come tour a venue. Right. But yeah, they love they love the the virtual tour. Well, the fact that you guys have kept fighting to keep your business going. Yes. And this will all eventually dissipate uh, at some point. You know, I mean, I think we're probably going to live with this disease or this virus. Oh, absolutely. For a long time. Absolutely. But the, the pressing danger won't always be there. So once they get a vaccine going mm-hmm. and, and people feel a little safer to get out and, and interact. And I'm seeing that yeah. more so recently. Well, you know, when they lifted the orders, 
mm-hmm. people started coming back to life. Yeah. And then it came back down, you know, with other criteria that, you know, okay, venues can open, but only with this capacity. Restaurants can open, bars can't, on and on. Yeah, yeah. But I'm seeing, I feel a, um, I feel a lighter, uh, less heaviness. Yes. In the air. Yes. Amongst people and clients, they're coming in, they're calling, they're they're getting back to their lives. I think people are starting slowly. to adopt a more cautious yes optimism and okay well to be safe i'm gonna put a mask on and use hand sanitizer and wash my hands but i can't stop my life forever right you know life does go on and as long as you're being smart and not in a gigantic crowded room of people Mm -hmm. or you know being unsafe in other ways Mm -hmm. i think we are going to have to get back to the business of life we do and do so do it a lot more cautiously and health in more health conscious where we you know observe certain things that we didn't before but you think about any other typical flu season absolutely and, and what have you and we it's should like, be we should have been the same practice we should have been doing all, all of that to begin right. with because you know <laughs> the flu can be pretty bad too Absol- and, yes. and, and contagious and I you know I even have had the attitude well it's not going to be that bad and then we've come down with the flu yes. or you know so I think that this is just going to teach everybody better cleanliness practices going right. forward and you know you can't it and just doesn't be hurt respectful anything. be respectful of the other you know of the other people and you know how they want to run their events right. and live their lives right. and and if it makes you uncomfortable you don't have to be there absolutely so absolutely you know it's been a, it's been a real I've had two waves of thought about it you know because on the one hand you you don't want to perpetuate and make this situation worse and prolonged. Right. At the same time, a lot of people's livelihoods are at stake. Yes. And uh, businesses are closing every day yes. because this thing has just devastated them, and they didn't take as many precautionary measures, or they didn't have mm. as a good of savings backed up, or, you know. So it's it's been a really it's been a real struggle for a lot of businesses. But you specifically being in the the wedding industry and the event industry, and that has been hit so it hard. It was really hard. Um, I wanted to have you on to be able to talk about. About the pivots that you had to make right. and the, the obstacles Girl, we're still to... <laughs> making pivots we make pivots every day I think that's probably just a good that's just good be yeah. fluid be fluid you and flexible to. you have to you've yeah. got to I mean just step out and try new things if it doesn't work step out and try something else when I first started and we were at home working you know when our business began I mean I had my first consult at my kitchen table right you know (laughs) I mean that's what we all do (laughs) I mean it was I look back on it now and the laundry aka room I took them to was I'm like did I really do that but you it know, probably, with all of my pieces. It but it's memorable. Just, it was endearing. Like, it oh, was, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it might have not been the most professional way to do it. But, but it's what it was. It's real life. Like, but, um, and a lot of people start in their own houses. Yeah. Or in their garage. Or, I mean, that to me, that's, that's just yeah. real. And I still have my little showroom at home. Yeah. And, you know, the warehouse. My de- husband doesn't want my stuff in anymore. <laughs> and. I mean, I'm trying to empty it out. But um, anyway, moving from there to uptown, oh, that was huge. Yeah. Very huge. You get a lot more foot traffic. Yes. But, you know, being in the rental business, I still find that people, my clients are going, uh, the majority of them are going to call me. Mm Mm-hmm schedule an appointment and we do work a lot by appointment Mm -hmm. the rental business as far as we're concerned and the decorating and different things like that consults they're not they're not that type of business that we go sit in the store eight hours a day right the foot traffic is it's just less than a retail real store. A yes. real, not a real business, but yes. a store where you would have people right. coming in and out. Right, right. But the appointments, I mean, I have my appointment book stays, you know, penciled in. and That's good. It, yeah, and I try to schedule them on certain days. I, some days I'll be there eight hours. Other days I'm there for an hour. But, again, that's the flexibility of, working for myself yes 
But then when we do have those weekend events and we're decorating, I mean, we're working all weekend. Yeah. So. Yeah, you yeah. don't really get a – weekends are more like Monday, Tuesday for you. Abs- right? Absolutely. You've got it. Yes. <laughs> oh, when I was in the wedding industry, it was like, yeah, what, what's a weekend? Exactly. <laughs> I don't know what that yeah. is. Here's your weekend, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Right. Yes. So, like, if I wanted to, to come and talk to you, what – you, you make an appointment, you come in – and what does that consultation entail? Is it catered to every individual and based on their theme or their event type? The first thing I do, if you you know, when you come in, I want to I want to sit down and just visit with you, like we're visiting now. Mm-hmm. I want to get your vision of what you see your event looking like. Mm-hmm. I have people come in; they're like, I don't know what to do. I've got to do this, or this is my wedding, this is my reception, I don't really know what I want to do, but when you start talking to them, they really do know, right. they have an idea, they, they just, don't just know how can't to vocalize put it, it. Together, yeah. together, excuse me. Um, I'm a visionary, I, I don't know where that came from, God just gifted me with that. I mean, we need those people. I'm telling you, <laughs> it it's hard for me to realize that other people can't do that but that's been one of the things I have really learned so I just help them envision they can tell me something and I'm like oh this and this and this and look I'll draw them a picture and anyway when they come in they're just frazzled right when they leave more times than not what's rewarding to me is when they say I'm so glad we came in. I feel so much better now. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. That makes me feel yes, just awesome. Well, knowing that you've taken that that's part of that stress in planning any kind of an event, whether that's a wedding or or a party of some kind or a corporate event, even yes, you know that if you're not somebody who's very decorative or you're not that's not your thing, mm-hmm. you know. Um, coming to a, a person who that's their specialty mm-hmm. and sitting down with them and talking through. Well, what we talked about, we wanted a lot of gold. I've heard think people say that's that. That's one that's, of the first things I'll ask. Are you a silver person? Or are you a gold person? Right. And so, you know, then you can go from there and, and to kind of take these, mm-hmm. I just don't know what to do. But then you start asking them the right questions. Exactly. And then by the end of it, it's like, oh, oh, I did kind of know what I wanted. Mm-hmm. And you, you have all these things that you can show them yes. in the, the, the storeroom. We could use this and this and put it together. And then you obviously have pictures from past events you've Absolutely. decorated that you can kind of go, are you looking to do something like this? You know, so I you mean, go through all the play steps. dates. <laughs> they love play dates. Oh. We've got the round table set up. Yes. We'll stage a setting for them. And they're like, oh my gosh, I love it. Mm-hmm. Or I let them do it. Yeah. They just go back there and Pick get what, what like. they want and start playing. Yeah. That's part of that's part of what we do. That's yeah. part of what I do. Well, too, when everybody, especially, and I'm more familiar with the wedding industry, um, you know, as women especially have this idea built up in their head, whether they can vocalize it or, or what have you. They they want their wedding to look a certain way and feel right. a certain way, right. and they want people to talk about it after. Oh, it was so beautiful. They did this, mm-hmm. and you play a role in that, you know. And I could come to a venue and take pictures, but if if it's just a venue with nothing. Well, yes, it's a special moment, but whenever you put your stamp or your personality on it in Mm -hmm. some way, shape, form, or fashion, right? You know, it really tells a whole story and I love the fact, yeah, that they can be tangible, you know, and sit on the furniture Mm -hmm. and get that vase in their hand, or you know, play with those candlesticks and yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that that really kind of makes them feel like they've been a part of their wedding, but also they let the professional do what they do best. (laughs) And what it's so funny, we can stage their tables and they'll take pictures. (coughs) Excuse me, I'm sorry. And um, they will, when they rent their merchandise or the pieces, they'll have their picture and they'll have their person if we're not decorating they'll have their person here's the picture I want it set up just like this it's so funny yeah which that's okay I mean it works yeah so yeah um I I you know I I got married young so you know my idea of what weddings should look like you know uh, basically just came from what I had seen other people doing you know yes or in the magazine you know we I didn't have but see that stuff wasn't very important to me like I just wanted to get married like I the 
the place and the stuff was all, you know, like very secondary. I'm glad that I, you know, was talked into doing certain things because it it really did make it prettier and, and, and more special in a way. But I, um, I always appreciated as a photographer going into a venue that you can really see that there was a lot of care and thought, ta- you know, put right. into how they decorated right. and how they set things up and made the, the whole event just flow so much better and then of course it's much more beautiful in pictures when you know it's been decorated that way so i always i always enjoyed and appreciated the couples who did take that extra step and And they're still i mean there are those events where the bride's like you know i don't it doesn't matter to me you know (laughs) just use these colors mom what do you think (laughs) literally and then you've got the brides that are really Mm hands-on so and um the corporate events for the most part they know what the what they want they just want you to do it and i love that yeah so and you can yeah. just do what you want yeah <laughs> just work the magic just go so. in and and do you tweak it every time you get a job like that where you do it a little bit differently oh, do they say absolutely. okay this is our color palette because these are our business colors mm-hmm. do you have to kind of fit that and yeah. then just do whatever you yes. want based on yes yes and from one event to the next i will analyze an event to pieces when i'm when it's finished and over with what would I have done different? Right. Mm-hmm. What will I do different next time? Right. You yeah. know, was that really necessary or, you know, was that just overkill? I think everybody does yeah. that. I would always look at pictures I'd taken and go, why did I post them that way? That I know, girl, ridiculous. I've been there. Some of those early <laughs> pictures I've taken of, of rental pieces, I'm like, did I really do that? Uh, creatives, that's how we are. We just yeah. always second guess ourselves after the fact. And everybody's like, they were lovely. They were yeah. amazing. And you're like, no, I could have done better (laughs) but look how we've grown I know you know it's just a growing process well speaking of that what do you think that you know having and running a business like this what has it taught you about yourself what has it taught me about myself for one thing just what we were talking about not everyone's a visionary right that's my job a lot of the time so knowing your specific role knowing I really never thought of myself as that that vision person but yes I've learned that I am a visionary and I've also learned and this has been a hard one to swallow not everybody has my taste (laughs) yeah (laughs) and I I have to pivot Uh to their style yeah and their taste and honestly sometimes that's difficult sure it's hard that's when it gets difficult hard for me to do because that's just not really my my forte right. that and I don't want to call out a style right, right. western sure. I guess mm-hmm. that's not my style can yeah. I do it yes am I going to just be over the moon over it right no yeah. maybe I shouldn't say that but, but it if is they're happy yeah. if they're happy and they love it then that's what matters right. that I made their day. Whenever you do run into a situation where you have a client who wants a style that you are just not thrilled about or you're not as good at visualizing that, what do you, are there some things you do to kind of help that along? So if you don't like, say, quote, quote, the Western motif, do you go look up examples to kind of yes. get, get your mind flooded with mm-hmm. images of things you can do? I will. I will look up examples and I'll, and I am just honest with them. I'm not sure I have, you know, the specific items, you know, that you would want. I can offer you these pieces, but, you know, to bring together your actual, you know, style of Western with lariat ropes and stuff like that. I (laughs) don't have that. Do you, do they provide some of that stuff for you? Yes, 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 they will. Especially if it's a style. I mean, to me, whenever I think of your you know your rental business it is very um it it definitely fits into a a few categories of genre and and I wouldn't necessarily go well I'm gonna call up Stacy because I want a big old western party yeah you know that's not what would come to mind for me but I I think it's nice that you are able to accommodate those people because you got to find business wherever you can right these days you know so and just be honest and if you know if basically when you come to visit with me you're interviewing me and I'm interviewing you Mm -hmm. and I have literally said I don't think we're going to be able to help you with that because I just don't 
I just don't have the pieces that you're going to need. There's a if there's been a few times over the years where I've had clients come to me and they they wanted me to shoot something for them, whether it be a wedding or something else, and either by what they've described they want or how they want the day to go or the type of photography they're wanting, I just would flat out say that's just, I mean, this is my body of work and you can see the exactly. style I do here. I mean, you know, I think you would be better off if you went and this person over here really, really does a great job with this style. I have done that. You know, I would recommend using them. Or right. like, I didn't do newborn photography. I, that was, you have to have a special gift and I didn't have it. <laughs> and so I would have these long-term clients that I had done their engagement pictures and their bridal pictures and their wedding and their first pictures with their dog. And then they're like, okay, we get, we're pregnant. And I do the maternity pictures. And then I was like, I don't do newborns. So here are the photographers I would list. Right. Here's who I'd recommend. And just they would just kind honest. of like, what yeah. and but I was like yeah I'm not good at that you know and they would be great you right. know and I can help you in that direction you know, push you in that direction but I you know I, I think that when you are open like that it tends to make people remember you I think so because you're, you're you told them I don't know how to do that but this person over here does mm -hmm. I'm going to recommend them right. and if that you want bling yeah and you want you know shabby chic or you want you know, classical or Gatsby mm -hmm. or I am your girl. Yeah. But yeah, not so much on the Western boots. <laughs> you know, so unfortunately. And we live in Texas. So and we live, I, what's with that, Sarah? I don't Maybe know. Maybe I need to. Well, there was a, there were a great many weddings that I shot there that was all burlap and lace and, you know, uh, cowboy boots for a while. That was the theme that it these was. girls got on. And you're just kind of like. And it's kind of, okay. That's kind of going by the Calming way down. Good deal. So, Good deal. Yeah. It's funny to see those trends kind it of pop really up is. over and over again. It really is. Um, and that can be fun to watch as a third party observer. Right, right. <laughs> um, what do you think has been um, one of the most helpful things in helping you run your business? Um, during this time period or just in general? I mean, you have eight years to pull from, so what, what do you... What's been helpful? Besides the software besides and helping the, you schedule things. Absolutely. Website is okay. a must, mm -hmm. and my spouse, I couldn't do it without him, even yeah. though he doesn't want to work, but when he works, he wants a paycheck. <laughs> um, he's my delivery warehouse person, yes. so, and he's still in training. Okay. Like after eight years, well, you yeah. know, he just wants to be told what to do. That's so I great. Just I know. <laughs> so I'm like, Here. let me do this. Okay. Yeah. And communication. <laughs> communication yeah. is key with, with the clients, with clients as well as Your as the mm -hmm. the husband. Yeah. So yeah. Good deal. Yeah, I think communication is a, a hard one for a lot of us to grasp. Yes. But the most essential. It has to be. Pretty much of yes. anything that we do. And stay in touch and you know, care with your clients. Mm -hmm. Their their event is their event, and it's the most important one to them. Mm -hmm. Even though you may have five going on, that communication and keeping in touch with them is I will say key. that you are you have a, a, a delightful personality that the, when you sit down to do a consultation with someone, you are almost like best friends within five minutes. Really? I mean, that's the kind of vibe you give off. Yeah. Like, you, you sit and you talk and you just chat like, you know, friends sitting and drinking a glass of wine, you know, and I think that makes puts people at ease yeah you know if they're stressed out about a wedding or, or right. an event that they're planning and you sit there and you're just like well how are you doing yeah, girl we got this and this is great yeah. and you're just like this is my best friend and she's helping me I've, I've, I think that's great in a business like this I've never really met a stranger no I can't so, see that about you yeah <laughs> if I can't if I can't if we're not warming up and communicating Something's wrong. Yeah. So in my eyes, because yeah. I, I just I just don't meet a stranger. Which I think in a party planning or a party rental business, that's a that's a kind of a, a plus. You need to have that you know I more so. extroverted personality. I'm glad it comes naturally. It really. I mean, you just do it so well that it's <laughs> just you. you're sitting there talking to this person and you don't think that it's going to be that big of a deal. And all of a sudden, by the time you're in it, you're like giving them a hug and like it's, we're going to talk yeah, later. You yeah. know. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, is that what would you say? Is that like what's your favorite part about this job? My favorite part yeah. is when, honestly, besides the picking the, the pieces and coming up with a new inventory, my favorite part is seeing those happy faces and the thank yous mm -hmm. for how their event turned out. Um, 
that I can put them at put them at ease. Mm-hmm. That, I mean, they're just so grateful and thankful, and just seeing the whole outcome, the finished product. We've we've planned for sometimes six months, yeah. But seeing it come to fruition and seeing their face, it's it's worth it all. Yeah, it's like a, a, a different work of art every week yes. that you have to do. Yes, and, and yes, yes. To... Just the creativity. Yeah. I, I love being creative. Yeah. And I love trying new things. Sometimes I'm off the wall and out of the box, <laughs> but hey, you know. Hey, that's if you don't like it, just tell me. It's your event. <laughs> I told Kelly that the other day. Yeah. She goes, yeah, I don't, I'm not much on those branches. I said, it's your event. We'll, we'll change that. Yep. So, yeah. What's the thing that you like the least about this job? Oh, goodness. Sometimes it's the loading and the hauling and the and, lifting. And the lifting. Uh-huh. I'm going to hire somebody one day for that. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's my least. Yeah. The least part. My least favorite part when we were doing that, that event was the, um, the pulling all the chairs out and then putting them away at the end of yes, the night. It was yes. so tedious. Yes. That would get really annoying after a while. Well, because it's so, um, what's the word? It's physically exertive and also it's, you got to. It's just so not challenging. Yeah. You just, I, I But I it's, it's kind of like a mindless activity, but it's also mundane, physically. Mundane, but exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. Physi- it requires a lot from you physically, but it's like, ugh there's nothing here like this yes. is not a thing yeah I think that's probably why <laughs> Kelly hired me for this next one to do all that <laughs> yeah I don't want to have to worry about it yeah that's what she said <laughs> so um what would you say would be like a um, one of your biggest achievements or successes in the last eight years in running this oh, business oh gosh that's hard oh I put you on the spot I know <laughs> I mean you know my I, biggest s- achievements moving uptown moving has been my has been my largest achievement I mean, because that's, that's I was a, terrified it's a huge leap forward in I terms was terrified of running out of, out of your house versus running from an actual retail space. <laughs> literally running from my house <laughs> to a small building downtown and then six months later into this huge building mm-hmm so that well, was very terrifying. I bet. I mean, yes. it's always that leap of faith that you kind of have to take. Uh, girl, it's all been on faith. But, you know, at the same time, it's also pretty rewarding, too, when you kind of listen to that, oh, I'm a little nervous, but mm-hmm. I need to do this in order to yes. grow. Yes. So you did. And Just then doing it scared. Yeah. Just doing it afraid. That's my motto. I mean. I'm kind of gutsy. Yeah. And, you know, I can, I can just take the leap and get in the middle of it and be like oops maybe I shouldn't have done that one of the videographers we interviewed uh, early on when we started this new format of the podcast he he said we just build the parachute on the way down I love (laughs) it like we jump off the pit and we just build it it on the way down because like you know you just what are you gonna do exactly you gotta figure out are you gonna stay stagnant Mm mm-hmm or are you just going to jump and take those fear can be so paralyzing for some people and and the thing you have to realize is that any majorly successful person in life made a, a thousand mistakes before they we came still to that make point. them yeah we people we still we're going to make them and you're going to make the wrong choice sometimes we are going to make so the wrong you learn choice. from that and yes. you move forward yes I typically am not a risk taker so I guess it's good that my husband is because we balance each other out where he could go like crazy wild over here and I kind of pull him back a little bit that's my husband and then he pushes me to take risks that I wouldn't normally take I'm the risk taker yeah. I'm like, have the faith. Yeah. <laughs> I, take the risk. How am I going to know if I don't do this? Yeah. But scared out of my bejeez at the same time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yes. Yeah. But I think that there's a there's a certain amount of motivation when you're a little afraid. Yes. To succeed. It's like, yeah. Because if you're not afraid, then there's no... Exactly. There's no reward. Exactly. So... How am I going to know what I can do if I don't try it? Yeah. What advice would you have for someone who wants to start a small business of their own, regardless of the type? Um, what do you, what would you give? What advice would you give them? What was given to you in the early days that you were like, "Wow, that was great," and you would pass on? Girl, I didn't have any advice. <laughs> I'm telling you, I jumped in with both feet. You, ju- you just did it. <laughs> I'm like, "You want to rent this? Okay, Let's here you it. go. When do you want it delivered?" Right. Yes. Um, advice for anybody that wants to maybe have a a better business plan than I did I like started 
and then my business plan came afterwards. Yeah, yeah, and it's still it's happens. still come, yeah. <laughs> Mine's, mine's fluid. Some people's brains work better that way. Exactly. Let me just start, and then I'll kind of yeah. pull the paths where mm-hmm. they need to go. But have, you know, have an idea of where you're going. I'm good at the big picture in my brain. It's just getting it. The details. The details, yeah. yes. So having a little bit more planning involved. Yes. Yeah. And that's hard for some people with different personality types to do. I mean, my husband, he's just like, business plan. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Let's just do this. I know. <laughs> and I, I'm just always tweaking mine. But, you know, I started good, and then though. had a website. Yeah. You know, I started and then, you know, we got a hauling trailer, a cargo trailer. Everything seemed to have came after I leaped in with both feet. Yeah. Well, you kind of saw what you needed, and so yeah, you, you just yeah. kind of added it, just, it as it was yeah, a thing. Yeah, it just grew. Because you so. never really guess those things ahead of time no. sometimes. There's no, no. People will say, well, they, these are the steps you should take. Mm-hmm. Um, yes and no. Um, they Some of those those A, B, C, D steps work for some people. Yes. But and I'll, they're important. They, they can be important. Yes. But I'll get back to those when when I need to when that happens <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll revisit that yeah because so. you know maybe that's not going to be as important as we think yeah right. well that's good I think that's a good plan but also as we've learned uh you got to be flexible too there's right. there's not you know you build up anything too terribly rigid you got to knock it down and start all over whereas exactly. you could just sort of like bend it this way a little and and, and thank goodness yeah because again during COVID we've got to be we've got to be flexible yeah we I have see. to be flexible with now. the clients you've got to be flexible give other vendors grace it just it's take it takes the team always but especially now yeah it takes everybody working together yeah and giving everybody just a little bit of grace yes just a little bit of patience yes because we are all trying to figure out this new way absolutely of and I by no means know it all I yeah. will never know it all I've never known it all but I learn as I go too yeah so well, but I'm I not just... afraid to figure it out right. I'm not afraid to learn it yeah so I think that has a big part to do with it well and two you could have said thrown up your hands and said well this is just ruining my entire industry yes. I'm just not going to do it anymore instead you said I'm going to figure out how to do this a little mm-hmm. differently let's yes. let's learn some things let's change some things and that's kind of what we're going to have to do from now on well, out I feel like and we do and what I can let me just be open and honest on this is far during the pivot of with COVID I have learned about one thing I've learned about myself is that I'm not a huge venue person. Just being throwing that on the table. Mm -hmm. I will be getting back to more of my roots of focusing more on my rentals, but running a venue is not just top on my. Yeah. priority list yeah does that make sense because that adds a whole other level it and a layer a of things that you yes, have to worry about it does and now with everything being what it is there's all these other restrictions you have to yes. follow yes. and that makes it even that much more work on mm-hmm. top of and that was all and stress that <laughs> venue part was already on or in the back of my mind about three months after we moved in there yeah so with the COVID and doing all these pivots, I'm like, you know, that's not my favorite part. Yeah. I do it, but it's not my favorite yeah. part. Learning it's the, yes. learning those things, knowing what you're strong at, what you're weaker at, and then pushing yes. in those directions. So there may good. be some more you know pivots to do but junk and treasures isn't going anywhere. Well, uh, that brings me to what does the future hold for you guys and what you're going to do next? Just basically, um, I'm on that fence between the venue and the rentals. Mm -hmm. And the rentals will always be the awesome pieces, the awesome merchandise, the awesome, the planning, the decorating. I'm just not 100% sure yet on what, if I will keep the venue. Yeah. But junk and treasures will always be. We may end up working from a warehouse location. Yeah. Because we work by appointment anyway. Right. So 
Yeah. yeah. Always, always like tweaking and, and, and always we're working tweaking. on what yes. you, what's best for you yes. and your business. Yes. And if adding in the venue is causing more problems than it's solving, then you got to, okay, am I going to have to eliminate that and right. just focus on this right. thing over here and expand my rental? Exactly. You know, and focus more on those things. Yeah. So I and think that's, that's my love. Yeah. That's, that's what you have your passion that, those for. Those are my roots. So. Yes. So, yeah. well, that's good. Yeah. Um, where can everybody find you guys on social media or on the internet? Y'all, um, everybody can find me on Facebook, mm-hmm. um, Junk what? and Treasures Event Decor Rentals. Okay, spell that for everybody. The Junk J U N K N Treasures at TX dot com is the website. Okay, and then it's Junk and Treasures. Um, I'm on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Be sure and visit the website. Yeah. All of the wish list. You can go to the wish list, pick out anything you want, submit it to me. You get a quote. Nice. We'll talk by phone, whatever the need be. You okay. can set up a consult request via the website. Call me, yeah. 936-676-3582. So, yeah. I'm always available and she texts you right back pretty much i do my best (laughs) i do my best unless i'm tied up with a client or another appointment yeah but i always get back to you yes she does and that's one of my that's one of my pet peeves yes is you answer your email you answer answer your clients you get back to them even if you can't give them an answer right right now you tell them i will be back with you that's a good business practice i have i that is my pet peeve. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Just let me know. One let me know that you hear me. <laughs> yes. 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 Well, Stacey, thank you so much for being on today and thank telling you. us your story. I think that's going to wrap us up a little bit. Um, we want to thank everybody for listening this week. Um, I want to hear what you guys think. So you should uh, message us on our website at painpoints.com or any of our social media. Hey, if you own a business and you want to tell us your story, you should uh, be a guest. Um, also, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, leave us a review it's really going to help us it's really going to get our podcast out there if you're listening on youtube like and comment and share and if you're listening on spotify follow us so that you never miss an episode thanks so much guys for being here today thank you stacy and um, we'll see you guys next time